the world. We did not uh, have our usual uh, scripture reading because I will also be preaching in the book of Jude. So, mabenta yung Jude. Ano? Itong month na to, I, I believe uh, four times that we preach on the book of Jude. Because I believe it is something that is uh, so up to date that uh, what is happening in our time had been that, uh, described by Jude and the warnings that we must heed have been written for our admonition so that we can consider things that are happening today because this is not a joke. It is something that is very serious that we have to put it in our hearts and in the, our mind so that we'll be able to, as uh, what our preacher said a while ago, we can really contend for the faith because this is the hardest thing to do in all of our Christian service unto God. Soul winning, that is good. We can lead souls to the saving knowledge of Jesus. Teaching the commands of God regarding Christian growth, that is still pleasant. But when you touch into the realm of spiritual warfare, then you are stepping into the realm of the devil. And he will see to it that you're going to have the fight of your life. And if you're not going to be careful, he is going to destroy us without mercy. So that is the reason why we have to always be reminded of these things so that we will be conscious of the things that we need to do in order to become ready in contending for the faith. This will be one of our lifetime endeavor. We will do this as long as we are living. Only that will stop us from contending for the faith. That is why we need to be serious regarding these things and reconsider all the things that we are you know, planning in our lives, our goals, it must always be according to the Word of God. I, I, there was really a challenge a while ago when he mentioned that if you want to do this, if you want to marry, if you want to find a job, if you want to go home, if you want to go abroad or whatever it is, do you have a scriptural reason? I believe that is something that we need to consider. Because most of our decisions, accept it or not, and I am guilty of this, is according to our convenience and comfort. When things are becoming uncomfortable and inconvenient, then we tend to escape. And we tend to find another place hoping that things will become different. But as being mentioned in the Bible again and again and again, no matter where you are, you are there. Amen. There's a lot of truth in that. There's a lot of truth in that. Wherever you are, you are there, meaning to say, whoever you are, you will be that person wherever you are. That's the meaning of that. So if you are problematic and you leave the place and you go to another place, you will still be problematic. If you are living a riotous life, you leave the place, find another place, you will eventually live a riotous life. Until repentance comes into our lives, then nothing will ever change because remorse is something that is associated with our emotion. But repentance is a change of mind. And when you change your mind, it eventually will lead to a change of life. So that is the thing that we need to know and we need to understand. And one thing that we also must consider is that, why is it very easy to say that God called us in this place and then in a heartbeat say, God is calling me to another place. You see, sometimes we do, we, we do that uh, like uh, changing clothes. 
like the calling of God is so temporary that we can just move in and out at our own will. Ladies and gentlemen, I've already, already given you the guidelines. You prepare, once you are prepared, God will move you. Amen. You do not have to move. Right. God will move you into a place where God will use you, not according to your own estimate, but according to God and according to the multitudes of counselors. Amen. That's why I, I, I always say this. Listen first. Consider first before making a decision. Most of us, we make a decision by listening only to ourselves. Of course, you will agree with yourself. Who wants to fight, to fight with one's self? You will be with yourself every day. So why fight with yourself? So agree with yourself. But then the question is, is yourself right? So that is why we are so blessed that we have a church that we can consult whatever decision we want to make in life. And mind you, most decisions are very difficult because it will affect not only us, but even our loved ones and the people around us. Amen? Shall we stand up and let us pray? Father, we are so thankful for once again giving us this opportunity to worship you in spirit and in truth. We thank you, Lord, because we have heard a lesson regarding the last days. Sometimes we are forgetting that the last days is characterized by apostasy. And when we say that we do not have to say anything against those people that may be standing behind the pulpit, it's just rejecting what you have written in your word that a great falling away will come before your coming O oh God so help us Lord to be courageous and to be tactful and to be straight and yet compassionate and loving so that Lord things that are wrong will be confronted according to your will I pray Lord that you will give us wisdom boldness and courage Clot with humility, O God, as we contend for what is right. Lord, help us not to cower, not to be afraid, but to stand knowing that you are with us. And as you assured us, that if God be for us, then who can be against us? That you assured us that you're going to be with us even unto the end of the word. May we find comfort and courage always, O oh God, because of your everlasting protection that you have placed around us, Lord, so that we can do whatever you want us to do, and the only thing that will happen to us are the things that you will permit and allow. Bless us, Lord, this morning as we study your word. Give me wisdom and help me to be a blessing to your people. And help your people, Lord, to open their hearts and mind so that understanding and wisdom will also come in our hearts so that we will know what to do in these last days. May you be glorified today. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. You may be seated. Thank you very much. I'm not going to uh, repeat what John have mentioned in the past two weeks regarding Jude. But I am going to focus on one thing that he mentioned and one verse that uh, he read a while ago and that is in verse number 11. I'm going only to take a portion of this verse and Lord willing expound on the word of God regarding the things that are connected with this particular phrase. The Bible says, Woe unto them, for they have gone in the way of Cain. It was explained to us what the way of Cain means, doing the things that we want to do according to our way, without any regard for authority, without any regard uh, for, the word of, from the, for the word of God, without any regard for the feelings of other people, but only our own. We believe that we are the master of ourselves, and we believe that we control our own destiny. We think that we are 
uh, the ones who is uh, in uh, control or running the show, but we do not understand that it is God and will always be God. Amen. Anything that we will do not according to God's way will never be blessed by God. But everything that we will do according to our way is the way of Cain. And we know what happened to Cain. He murdered his own brother and he became a vagabond and he was even uh, marked that people who will see him will do something uh, bad to him. And then the second phrase says, and run greedily after the error of Balaam for reward. It was expounded a little bit a while ago that people today are doing things out of greed, not because they want to glorify God. They have found a merchandise among the people of God, and they have found a personal business among the ministry of the Lord. They use the people of God in order to enrich themselves and to fill their own belly, and this is what Balaam did in the Old Testament. And then the last part says, and perish in the gainsaying of Korah. This person have convinced the people of God to turn against God. This is something that is very blatant. This is something that is very straight. That is why the condemnation and the judgments of God was swift in that while they are doing this, while Korah is gaining the people in what he's saying, all of a sudden there was an earthquake and the earth swallowed up these people in a very uh, swift way. Because there are things that God will not really allow and there are things that God will allow for a while and give us a chance so that we can repent of the things that we are doing that is against the will of God. But today I'm going to expound on the second part of verse number 11 when the Bible says, And run greedily after the error of Balaam. And I'm going to entitle this message, Let us be careful in what we pursue in life. Let us be careful in what we pursue in life. You see, patriots are people that loved their country. Amen. When they say that you're a patriot, it means that you're willing to die, to die for your country. And what we need today in our churches or among the Christians are patriots for God. Amen. Those people who are willing to die for the cause of the Lord Jesus Christ. We saw this in the lives of many people in the Old Testament and the New Testament, especially so during the Dark Ages, that if you are going to read, even though it's not an inspired book, it is a historical book, if you will read the Fox's Book of Martyrs, you will see people willing to die and actually die because of their faith in the Lord. You will see people sown asunder. You will see people eaten by lions. You will see people drawn by the, the hundreds and by the thousands. You will see them being beheaded and their heads are being used as, uh, to light the street going to the temple of Nero. Ladies and gentlemen, there are so many people who are patriots for God who do not care about their lives but what they want to do is to glorify the name of God. And that is what we need today. Because we have grown a generation of Christians who are yellow, who are coward, and who do not care about the things of God. We live in a time where Christians are willing to compromise. We live in a time where Christians are not willing to stand up for what is right, to stand up for the truth. We live in a time where Christianity must be convenient, where Christianity must be comfortable. If not, then we are willing to give up what we believe for the Lord. And that is the sad commentary of our time today. Amen. And you say amen even if you die today. Amen. That is what is happening in our time. And yet, we are so complacent. As if nothing is even happening under our nose. As if nothing is being destroyed. As if the foundation, even though it is being destroyed, we do not care. Why? Because we greedily Pursue something that will make us happy. I remember there's a movie entitled In Pursuit of Happiness. And if you're going to look at the movie or the theme of the movie, they're doing everything just to be happy. 
Ladies and gentlemen, whatever we are pursuing, I will say it again and again and again and again, are already reserved for us in heaven. We are going to enjoy it one of this time when the Lord Jesus Christ will, will come and He is going to rapture us and He is going to, to judge us in the judgment seat of Christ and we'll, He will give us reward and then eternity will come and we, He will enjoy everything that God has provided for so that in our time today, let us pursue the glory of God instead of our own happiness. Because anyway, this is only temporary. It will not last for eternity. We may only have a few days or a few weeks, a few months or even a few years in this world. But after we step out of this world, we are going into an eternity of bliss. That is why it should encourage us to bear all the hardness. It should encourage us to bear all the hardships. It should encourage us to bear even all the disappointments and the discouragement, but to keep on keeping on knowing that there is a prospect that is waiting for us. And we should not be afraid. Even if our lives will be taken as we stand and fight for the truth and for what is right. Lalo na ngayon mga kapatid, parang napakahirap tumindig sa katotohanan. Why? Because we look at persons and not on issues. Minsan matatakot tayo kasi ang laki na aking binabangga. Wala yun si gentlemen, we, ang luwanag kanina, it was eloquently explained that we do not hate the person. We hate the sin. We hate the actions that they are doing. Even in this, in this church, I know that you love me, but you do not love the bad things that I do. The same thing. We are not against these people personally. We are against what, what, what uh, they are doing. Especially in compromising the faith. So that is what we are fighting uh, against. What we are fighting. What we are fighting for is so that the truth will remain to be proclaimed in this world regardless of who these people are. Kaya nga, madalas na pagkakamal lang kaming, ako daw galit na galit kay forward. Sabi ko, ano magagalit sa kanya? Pero mali ang ginagawa niya. Mali ang mga tinuturo niya. At kahit sino magturo, kahit si Cedric, magagalit ako sa tinuturo niya. Kahit si John, magagalit ako sa, sa tinuturo niya. Kahit sino pa, kasi mali yung turo, hindi natin gusto. Hindi pinag-uusapan kung sino. Pinag-uusapan kung ano. That is what we need to look at. And now, as was mentioned before, and I confirmed, that those who are against all of a sudden became in favor of because the person that they are against right now is occupying a place of authority and it is very hard to go against the authority because they can use it in order to make your life miserable ito may ang mga preacher natin taas ang kamay kung buhay kayo ayan Nasa bangko kayo. Nasa church. May nag-preach. Maliwanag ang sinabi. Kaya kayong ipapatay. Ah. Nang congressman. Hmm. Maliwanag yan. Palpit yan. Pero sa bawi naman, hindi ko naman gagawin yun. Ganun lang naman eh. Magmamapuri ka, sabihin mo, galing mo lahat, biglang, to God be the glory. It is not me, it is God. Ganun naman eh. Ang Diyos talaga, ano yan eh, panakit butas eh. Ang Diyos talaga, yung salitang to God be the glory, ano yan eh. Formula yan eh. Formula of humility. After trumpeting all that you have done, then you will say, to God be the glory, great things He had done. And that is why it's becoming very hard for us 
to contend for the faith and those who are coward will become more coward because of the insurmountable wall that we are facing you see if God will give us this mountain to climb remember he will give us the strength to climb them God will not ask us to do something without him supplying the necessary thing so that we can do that something that he asks of us what kind of God will ask his people to contend for the faith and not give the tools so that we can contend for the faith what kind of God who will say that we must do things according to the scripture and not give us the power to do things according to the word of God what kind of God is that that is not my God my God will supply all your needs. Amen? So that in our lives, He will be glorified. So in the account that we have read, as I have said, what we need are God's patriots or people with high spiritual goals and aims in life and will do everything, forgetting even their own selves in order to glorify the God who saved them who died for them and who saved them. One thing is that these are ordinary Christians who may be reluctant to fight, but when called for, will step in front and contend for the faith. These are unknown people. Parang dito, sino ba mga kilala sa atin? Dito wala. Unknown, ordinary people. The base things of this world they may be reluctant at times, but when duty comes that they need to stand up and fight for what is right, they are going to stand up. These are people who are contrary to the false teachers who are motivated by things such as money, fame, selfish agenda, and things that will glorify themselves like Balaam these people who will fight for what is right are only motivated by one thing and that is to preserve the truth of God. That's the only thing. We do not even care if we'll get something out of this. What we care about is that God will be glorified in the things that we are doing for Him. Jude says that these false teachers are, th are people that are doing things only for themselves not for others and definitely not for the glory of God. Let us look at the life of Balaam and see why Jude says that we must not fall after the error of Balaam for reward, which is what we call greed. We're going to look at maybe two, three, or four chapters so that we can understand the story behind this particular phrase given to us by Jude. In Numbers chapter 23, verse number 10, there is something that is noble about Balaam. Balaam is a prophet of God. He has a reputation, a good reputation. That is why he was sought, even by the enemies of God. Look at what Balaam says in Numbers 23, 10. Balaam said, let me die the death of the righteous. That's a good goal, amen? If I will die, let me die the death of the righteous. What is that? I will die doing the things of God. I will die serving God. I will die glorifying God. I will die in the ministry. I will die preaching the word of God. I will die worshiping God. I will die inside the will of God and not outside the will of God. That is the desire of the heart of Balaam. And I believe that is true. I believe he's sincere about this. But then again, when you make such pronouncement, the devil will come and try to destroy what you believe. And try to prove you wrong. Remember what I told you yesterday. Satan is always suspicious of us. Satan does not believe that there is a person living today for the Lord who really wants to glorify God without selfish motive. He does not believe that. 
That's why he is out to prove that we have a price. And he will offer that price in order to show even us that we are not sincere and truthful in the things that we are doing for the Lord. So this is the prayer of Balaam, but unfortunately, the prophet did not heed his own prayer. He did not leave his own prayer. You see, all of us will die. Amen. Hebrews 9.27, appointed unto man wants to die. But after this, the judgment. But the only thing that matters when we die is whether one is counted righteous or not. Because if you're counted righteous, you go to heaven. If not, you will go to hell. But Balaam is already a prophet of God. He is a safe person. So he definitely will go to heaven. But what matters now is if he will die in a righteous state of life. That is what we are called for. To live a righteous life and to die in the will of God. You see, our earthly standing will be of no more consequence when we appear before the throne of God. Everybody must hear the gospel through repentance and faith so that we can gain the righteousness given to us by the Lord Jesus Christ that we can only find through the gospel. Amen. Romans 1, 16 and 17 is very clear when the Bible says here that for I am not ashamed of the gospel of Christ for it is the power of God unto salvation to everyone that believeth. I hope you did this in your life. To the Jew first, ito madalas ma <laughs> misinterpret, and also to the Greek. Kaya nga kung i-apply mo ito, to the Jew first and then to the Greek, nasa na tayo? Hindi naman tayo Griego. So we need to understand the word of God. For therein is the righteousness of God revealed from faith to faith as it is written, the just shall live by faith. After we got saved because of the gospel, then we live a life that is righteous and just before God. So this is the desire of the heart of Balaam, but something wrong happened as his life continues. You will see that Balaam's desire to meet death in a right relationship with God was admirable. Yet, his life did not measure up to his prayer. He wanted to please God and the world at the same time. That is a no-no. You cannot live for God and for the world at the same time. The Bible is very clear. You cannot serve two masters. That's impossible. That is not uh, even uh, possible in the life of a Christian. That your one, one uh, a foot is on the Lord's side and the other foot is on the devil's side. You cannot do that. You cannot live on the fence. You need to pick a side. And because we are saved, then we need to pick the side of God. Amen? So that is what we need to do. When the two conflicted, the sad thing is he chose the word like Demas. When there was a conflict, he chose the word like the prodigal son. When there was a conflict, he chose the word like Mark at one time. When there was a conflict, he chose the word like Peter at one time. When there was a conflict, he chose the word. And whenever you choose the word, then you are going to invite misery and problems in your life. Amen. Because the Lord Jesus Christ told Paul, uh, imperatively, it is hard for thee to kick against the prick. That's very hard to do. You cannot fight God and live to tell about it. You are going to lose if you are going to go against the will of God. So Jude saw the error of Balaam repeating itself in the churches today. Jude saw that greed is one of the motivation of the people in churches today. I'm not only talking about the one standing behind the pulpit. I'm also talking to the ones that are sitting on the pews because some members are here for gain and not to glorify God. And some pastors are here for gain and not to serve God and to serve the people. Greed is overtaking as a primary motivation in our churches today. That's why in the olden times, 
you will seldom hear pastors getting rich. Ako, inabot ko pa yung time na yun. Seldom that pastors are getting rich. But now, most pastors are trying to get rich in many, many ways. Some are becoming pastors because of what they can get out of the ministry, not what they can give into the ministry. People are taking up a bishopric in the churches because of the control that they can have over the people, not that they will be under the control of God. Things are changing rapidly, and because Jude saw this, he gave us this particular epistle, as John said a while ago, in order to warn us. Some of the religious leaders were giving the appearance of being righteous, but were actually preoccupied with worldly concerns. How can you be a pastor and still desire to be a mayor? How can you be a pastor and still desire to be a governor? How can you be a pastor and still desire to be a congressman? How can you be a pastor and still desire to be a senator? How can you be a pastor and still desire to be the president of whatever country you are a citizen of? Ladies and gentlemen, it is a mandate, it is a mantra that we have lived for a long, long time in the separation of church and state. And if you're occupying an office of the church, why occupy a position of the state? You simply are merging the two and destroying the line of separation. And there is nothing that you can say in order to fool those people who understand the Word of God. Wala siyang masasabi para lukohin tayo na intindihan natin ang Word of God. Hindi! Para mawin ko sila. Separation nga ng church and state eh. Yun ang paraan ng Diyos eh. Eh bakit iibahin mo? Ano yan? Way of Cain. You do not change that. How can we win the people in politics if we will not go into politics? Ladies and gentlemen, we win the people in politics, in the slum areas, those that are living in, in fresh villages, those that are living in the countryside with the same thing, preach the gospel of Jesus. That's it. And there is no other way. Hindi kasi pag politiko ka, pakikinggan ka nila, so sabi sa'yo, Pagka nga politiko ka, yung kontrapartido, kahit anong sabihin mong tama, mali. Oh. Kontrapartido ka eh. Oh. Kaya hindi yun ang totoo. Ang totoo, ang gospel para sa lahat ng tao, and whoever you are, you can preach the gospel. You may not do it inside the August chamber because you are not allowed to do it, but you can do it outside while they are coming out and preach to them the word of God. There are so many ways to do it. But we are doing it our own way out of self-ambition and out of greed and out of what we can get from the ministry. Greed caused them to put the flesh before God. You see, because covetousness is a very subtle sin and it is very difficult to perceive at the start. A covetous person will not be uh, openly seen at the start because they will start in a humble manner. They will slowly try to build up and when things are built up, then that's the time that they're going to get their gain. And that's the only time that greed will show up after the time that they have brainwashed the people so that they will be supported with the greed that they are doing in life or even in the ministry. You see, in time, those who blind themselves to their materialism will not only defend their actions, but will also run unrestrained after more. Di ba napapansin? Tayo lang, tayo lang, mga Kristiyano, tayo dito. Di ba? Noon narinig ko, 300 lang okay na sa akin. Just a salary of 300 will be enough. And then we want more. And then it became 400. You said 450 will be enough. 
And then it became 450, 500, I believe, will be enough. And then it became 500, and then later on 600, I, I believe, will be more than enough. And then it became 600, but you want 700, you want 8, 9, 10, 11, 12. It will not stop. Why? Because greed. If not uh, kept, will engulf our hearts. The same thing with, with uh, the people in the ministry. The same thing even with the pastors. They want a simple car and then a branded car and then one more and then something that can go inside small streets, something that can go uh, uh, in thoroughfares, something that can fly on top of the building. They will want more. Why? Greed. Greed is insatiable. You cannot satisfy greed no matter what you do. When a man succumbs to greed, he had just sold his own soul to the devil. Because remember, even the devil offered the word to the Lord Jesus Christ. But praise God, he did not, he did not fall into that temptation. Amen? The Bible says the love of man is the root of all evil. Name an evil. It is because of the love of money. First Timothy chapter 6 and verse number 10. But as Christians, what we need to do is First Timothy 6, 11. Let us have, please look at that. 6, 10. For the love of money is the root of all evil, which while some coveted after, they have erred from the faith. You see, when you love money, you will err from the faith. I don't know if you still remember, but I preached before, money changes things. It will change your preaching. It will change your conviction. It will change your belief. It will change your life. It will change everything in you. And you are going to err from the faith. Why? Because in the faith, you do not pursue money. In the faith, you glorify God. In the faith, you serve people. In the faith, you forget yourself. In the faith, you are willing to sacrifice. But when you love money, you're not going to do these things. So you will err from the faith. And pierce themselves through with many sorrows. You know, sometimes it's our problem. Our problem is we look at these people who have big buildings, beautiful cars, beautiful houses, beautiful appliances, gadgets, and all of these things. And sometimes we can feel uh, jealousy or envy. We envy these people. Don't, because the Bible says that they are peers with many sorrows. They may have much money, but look at their family. What's happening to their family? Look at their children. What's happening to their children? Look at their lives. What's happening with their lives? They will show an appearance that everything is okay, but deep inside. There is that sorrow. That even though they have all of these things, there is an emptiness inside. Because so many wrongs are happening in their lives. Would you want to be a millionaire and lose your children in worldliness? Or would you like to be with just bare minimum, but with your family living, living in joyful a bliss in the Lord. What would you choose? You see, sometimes we, we, we think that these people are happy. We sometimes think that you know, they are lording it over. Yes, they may be doing that. Do you know why? Because they're trying to drown the emptiness and, the, and, and the, what you call the uh, fail, failures that they have inside their hearts. Alam you ba yung defense mechanism? Di ba pag, pagkawawa ka, nagyayabang ka? Para hindi makita yung kaawa-awa mong kalagayan, ang makita yung kayabangan mo, mas okay ng mayabangan sila kesa kaawaan ka. Hindi ba, merong defense mechanism na sweet lemon, na kahit hindi tama, hindi maganda, pero dahil ginawa mo, sasabihin mo sa kanila, okay ito. May defense mechanism ang tao. And that is what they are doing. If you love money, if you are greedy, if you have much in this world, but you are not doing it according to the word of God, there is much sorrow in their hearts. 
Hindi lang yun. Yung fear and the knowledge that you know the people that surrounds you, you suspect that they do not really love you, but they are there because of what they can get from you. Do you know why you think that? As a man thinketh in his heart, so is he. Because he's thinking what they can get out of the people, he's also thinking that people wanted to get something from him. That is what's happening with these people. So we should not envy them. That's why we should have compassion upon them and pull them out of the fire where they are being fried by the devil. But look at verse number 11. The Bible says, But thou, O man of God, so he's talking to the man of God, flee these things and follow after righteousness, godliness, faith, love, patience, and meekness. These are the things that we need to do. And these are the opposite of what they are doing. They are not fleeing these things. They are not following after righteousness. They are not doing godliness. They are not uh, growing in the faith. They do not love people and God, but they love money. They are not patient, and there is no meekness in them. Why? Because they want things for themselves. And then, look at the warning in uh, verses 17 to 19. People will get rich. We know that. But he said to Timothy, charge them that are rich in this world, those with money. Raise your hand if you are one of the rich in this world. That's why this is something that is not applicable to us. But anyway, we need to study. Charge them that are rich in this world that they be not high-minded. Why? Because when you have riches, you think that you are better than other people. So do not be high-minded. When you are rich, this is how you look. Your mind is high. That's why you do not stoop down. This is how you walk. To make your mind high. Nor trust in uncertain riches. Why? It can be taken from you in the twinkling of an eye. Just one flick of a finger. It can be taken from you. But trust in the living God who giveth us richly all things to enjoy. You may have much food. But only God can give you the enjoyment of food. You may have a, uh, the best bed wherein a person can sleep, but only God can give you a peaceful rest. Not those things, but God. And if things came, uh, comes from God, it will make us enjoy it fully by the grace of God. Look at verse 18. 18. That they do good. That they be rich in good works. One advantage of being rich is you can be rich in good works. Hey, you understand that? If you have much money, if you have more money, you can do more with that money. You can do more good or more evil things with that money. Ready to distribute, willing to communicate. That's why a rich Christian will not continue to become rich. Why? Because that Christian will be willing to distribute and will be willing to communicate. You can be rich but not too much because you are going to share the blessing if you really love God and if you are really a Christian. Verse 19. Laying up in store for themselves a good foundation against the time to come that they may lay hold on eternal life. Meaning to say there is a reward waiting for us if we are going to do things according to the will of God. Amen? So, to really appreciate Jude's warning, as I have said, it's important to recall the events surrounding Balaam's life. So now we will go to the message for today. Number one, we need to understand that first impressions are sometimes deceiving. First impressions are sometimes deceiving. When Balaam was first introduced in scripture, it seemed that he had a desire to live a righteous life. He has that desire. But somewhere along the way, it changed. So desire is not enough. 
there must be action. There must be sacrifice. Because if all you have is desire, you may not have proven anything. Amen. Who desires to have a car? Come on, be honest. Many of us. But the question, are you willing and able to have a car? You may have the desire, you may not have the money. So nothing will happen. So you may desire all you want to live a righteous life, but if you're not going to do it, it will never happen. Amen? If you will not live according to that, uh, that desire, then nothing will happen. You will see that gradually, he shifted his focus from God to serving self. Kaya ang Bible, I believe some of the uh, uh, authors are Filipinos. Because he, all of a sudden, from serving God, nagbailambing to serving self. Di ba? Di ba yung balimbing? Oh. Kaya yung pangalan Balaam, doon ang galing yun eh. Nagbalimbing siya. Before he was serving God. And now, he's serving self, he became a Balaambing. So we need to be careful that our focus does not shift off God. It must always be focus in God. Looking unto Jesus. Trusting God. Doing the things for God. Not swerving and not shifting it off into another place. So you will see that in the life of Balaam, Balak came. Kaya talagang Pilipino. Nagbalak siya ng hindi maganda. So Balak was troubled with the presence of Israel in the plains of Moab because they are constantly in battle. And Balak heard that Israel is a formidable army. Listen, as long as Israel is obeying God, nobody can defeat them. As long as Israel is in the will of God, nobody, not even Goliath, not even the Philistines, not even the Hittites, not even the Jebusites will be able to defeat them. Why? Because God is with them when they are doing what is right in the sight of God. And they are at the plains of Moab and they are ready to fight against Balak and Balak was so afraid. And then he heard that there was a man named Balaam. He said that this is my only chance to have victory over the Israelites. So I need to call Balaam and have him on my side against the people of God or against Israel because if not, I'm not going to win. He heard the reputation of Balaam that whomsoever Balaam curse will be cursed and whomsoever Balaam bless will be blessed. So he said, if I can make Balaam curse the people of Israel, then I am going to have the victory. So he sent people to Balaam to do his balak. He offered Balaam wealth and honor. If only he will come with them and if he will curse the people of Israel. So he said, he told the people, okay, sleep here for the night and I am going to confer with God if God will allow me to go with you. But then God said, no, of course, you, need to, you do not need to do that because you know that Israel is a blessed people and Israel are people that I bless so you cannot curse them so you, do, you, you will not go with them. And then Balaam, true to his word, talked to the people, I'm sorry, I cannot go with you because God did not allow me to go with you. Isn't that good, amen? But it may be good, but it could be better. Do you know why? When he told them, because God did not allow me, he gave them an impression that I, wa I may want to, but I was not allowed by God. So when they gave that report to Balak, he said, well, we will try it again. Because number one, maybe God's mind will change. 
Or number two, maybe he will have the will to disobey God and come with us. So the second time, he sent men to, ba to Balaam with more offer, with more money, with more honor, and these people are more dignified. I hope that you will just read uh, those three chapters and you will see what we're talking about. So Balaam left the impression that he would gladly have accepted the offer if the Lord had given his approval. So that is why when there is temptation, we just say no. Do not give any condition. Because you are giving an impression to the devil that if the conditions are right, then I might do it. So that is the, that is the reason why there was a second offer to Balaam by Balak. So, when Balak asked that, he is representing Satan that Satan does not give up easily. As I have told you yesterday, Satan believes that we have a price. The only reason why we are saying no is because we are not offered enough in order to say yes to the temptation. So Balak asked it again, and you will see later, he asked him again, and you will see later, he asked him again, and for the fourth or fifth time, he asked him again. He will never stop. Satan will keep on coming back, amen, until he gets what he wants from us. That is why we need to be, uh, to understand and heed the word of God. Let us look at Matthew 16, 26. Matthew 16, 26. Look at what the Bible says. For what is a man profited if he shall gain the whole world and lose his own soul? Or what shall a man give in exchange for his soul? Why are we, why are we pursuing these things? What profit will it, will it give us? If Balaam, listen to me, curse Israel, and he were given honor, and he were given money, and he were given power, what will it profit him? That is what the Lord Jesus Christ is asking. What will it profit you? Sa Tagalog, anong napakinabangan mo? E mawawala yan. Pero yung pagtalima mo sa Diyos ay mananatili yan. So what, shall it, what will it profit them? No temporary pleasure or momentary possession can ever make up for the loss of personal integrity. That is something that we need to understand and sadly, we are falling from. Because, kasi dumating na tayo sa panahon, di ba yung kapangkano sa kasal? Ba't di kayo magpakasal? Ano yung kasal? Papil lang yan. Oh. That's why they do not care for marriage anymore. Because it's only a paper, it's only a contract that can be uh, broken by the two con uh, contracting parties. So what's important is that we understand each other. What's important is we love each other. So even without the bondage of marriage, then we can do what we want to do and live as husband and wife. Ladies and gentlemen, it is the design by God and the devil is doing everything to destroy what God designed that is good for mankind. So he's asking us these things so that we can understand. So the response of Balaam is found in Numbers 22:18. Again, he tried to be impressive. And he took up his 22.18 kapatid. And Balaam answered and said unto the servants of Balak, if, Bala, if Balak would give me his house full of silver and gold, I cannot go beyond the word of the Lord, my God, to do less or more. Kahit na ibigay pa sa akin ni Balak ang kanyang bahay na punong-puno ng silver and gold and precious stones hindi pa rin ako gagawa ng anumang bagay na hindi naaayon sa salita ng Diyos impressive and most of the times we are like that ano pala kayo sa akin hindi sa Panginoon ako sa Diyos ako kasi wala pa ngayon tamang price wala pa talaga yung 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 uh, yung limit ng ating uh, kagustuhan parang pwede pang itaas yan 
Pwede pan tumaas yan. And we are going to wait for that time. But Balaam consulted with God again, knowing God's previous answer. Balaam is now forgetting that God is an unchangeable God. That God is an immutable God. He wanted to know if God will change his mind. If God called you, he called you. He will never change his mind. If God wants to use you, he wants to use you. He will never change his mind. So do not ask God again. Panginoon, dito ba? Dito ba? Dito ba? O dito ba? Ang dapat kong kalagyan sa isang sulok kong taglay sa ilalim ng araw, dito ba? Huwag na, sinabi na ngang doon eh. We are fond of questioning God. God will know when it is time to move. Will let us know it. He will not leave us in the dark. So don't go ahead of God. He consulted God the second time. He have not accepted the will of God. He wants to see if God will change his mind. And suddenly, the worst punishment that God can inflict in human beings are free, is our free will. Because we tend to choose what will destroy us instead of what will build us. Kaya sabi ng mga Calvinists, walang free will. Kasi pag may free will, makapangyarihan ng tao kesa sa Diyos. Kaya maraming kapahamakan dahil sa free will natin. Sa isang banda, tama sila. Kasi nga, yung free will natin, ginagamit natin para piliin yung mali. Hindi para piliin yung tama. And if we do not know how to use this free will, then it will destroy us. So God allowed, this time, God allowed Balaam to go with the men to Balak, but he was only to speak what God spoke. God said he could go, but he never said he should go. Binigyan na ngayon ng test ng Diyos si Balaam. Sige, kanya, kung gusto mo sumama, sumama ka. Pero, ang sasabihin mo lang yung sasabihin ko. Pero hindi sinabi ng Diyos na kailangan mong sumama. So, tinuturuan na ng Diyos si Balaam dito. Pinapakita na ng Diyos, Balaam, pag pinilit mo yung sayo, hindi maganda ang magiging resulta. Minsan ganun tayo, pilit ng pilit at pag pinagbigyan tayo ng Diyos. Hinayaan ng Diyos, makikita natin kung ganong mali. Na dapat in the first place, we already know that our will against God's will will never be right or will amount to nothing. We need to understand that in the first place. So, we need to understand that there is a profound difference between permission and approval. Yun yung sinasabi ni John kanina. Nagsasabi ka, hindi para humingi ng permission o ng approval, kasi may desisyon ka na. Ipinapaalam mo lang, you're just letting people know what you will do, but you do not even care what they think about it. Para masabi mo, at least I told you. At least you knew. Ladies and gentlemen, that is the way of Cain, doing things according to your own will. Disregarding the authorities and even the counsel that people have blessed, have place around you so that you will be in safety if you will consult the multitude of counselors available for you. That is what we do. Siguro, sa isang daang nagsabi sa akin, wala man siguro sampu yung nahingi ng payo kung ano gagawin. Yung 90%, alam na nila ang gagawin nila at sold out na sila sa gagawin nila. Kaya minsan, pag may nagsabi sa akin, oh, sige. Ay, nagagawin ko. Made up na mind mo. Oh. Pastor, ang papa kumatay ako. Ah, sige. Eh, deci decided ka na eh. Ah, kailangan mo ito lang. Ah, hindi na ako. Decided na ako. Sige, kapatid, ikaw na lang. Oh. Pastor, punta po ako sa ganitang lugar. Ha? Ah, sige. Eh, kahit ano gawin ko eh. Ah, hindi ho. Ah, ganito ho kasi. Ganito ho kasi. Kasi bago ka nagsabi, nakover mo na all bases eh. So kahit ano sabihin ko, may sagot ka na. 
At pagka ako'y kumontra, palilitaw pa na, Pastor, kinokontrol mo ang buhay ko. Mayari ako doon. Eh, yun pa naman ang ayaw ko. Lagi sinasabi ko na hindi. Meron tayong free will. Meron tayong individual soul liberty. Kaya lang yung liberty mo, yung ginagamit mo para sa gasaan mo, yung mga bagay na hindi dapat magasaan. Oh, di ba? But, ang pupuntaan ko ko naman ay maganda rin. Ay, yung iiwan mo, ano na? Oh. Di ba? Ano na? Oh. Ay, hindi, pamilya rin naman yung pupuntaan ko. Ibang pamilya nga lang. Ay, paano pamilya mo? Oh, ay, di wala. Kasi ibang pamilya pupuntaan mo. O dapat iniisip natin, mga kapatid. Si Balaam hindi nag-iisip. Kaya Balaam bigang isip niya sa Panginoong Diyos, hindi siya nag-iisip. He took a second look at sin. Taking a second look at sin will not make it less sinful. It is the same. In the sight of God. Amen? If a person's heart is not pure, it is possible to rationalize and condone almost every course of action like Balaam. Because his heart is not pure because of the temptation that was given to him. So he is now giving all rationalization to all he will do. He says, okay, I will go with you, but I will only say what God wants me to say. So in short, he went on his way, he prepared, and he rode his ever faithful donkey. May donkey siya. And that donkey is faithful to Balaam. Because he's using that donkey for a long, long time. So he rode his donkey in order to see Balak. And then for no apparent reason, the donkey veered into a field. And Balaam wrestles against the beast to back it into the road with the rain. And because the donkey is not responding, he strike, he struck the donkey so that the donkey will come back to the road. And then after that, a short time later, he came to a place where the road was hemmed by two walls. Masikip, may dalawang wall. And then, while negotiating that road, the donkey, all of a sudden, veered again toward one side, smashing the foot of Balaam into the wall, and he became so angry, and again, he struck the donkey. And then after a while, the donkey just sat down and refused to move. And he again struck the donkey, but this time the donkey spoke. Kapatid, pag masyado nang hindi makatarungan, yung donkey nga nagsalita eh. Tapos ikaw nilalapastangan ka na. Binabaliwala na yung kalooban ng Diyos sa buhay mo. Ay tahimik ka pa. Yung donkey nagsalita. Ano ba kanya? Ba't papalo ka ng palo? Inaano ba kita? Sabi ng tanke. Nagsalita yung tanke. Inausap niya. Numbers 22, tingnan niyo. Nagsalita eh. Oh. And the Lord opened the mouth of the ass. Hindi pwet ha. Yung tanke yun. Kasi yung ass ka yung picture ni. Yung eh. tanke nagsalita dito, hindi sa ano ha. Eh, mabaho yun kung sa ano yun. And the Lord opened the mouth of the ass. And she said unto Balaam, babae pa pala to, What have I done unto thee? Ano ba ginawa ko sa'yo? That thou hast smitten me this three times. What did I do wrong? Saan? Saan ako nagkamali? Kanon dangke? Nakatatlo ka na! Eh dito kinawa yung baseball. Three strikes, you're out. Sabi niya, ano ba? Ay, kita mo, 29. 29. Okay, magtawa na dyan. So, kasi yung ginagawa nyo. And Balaam said unto the ass, kita mo, nakipag-usap siya. Kapag ka ikaw, lubog ka na sa kamalian, hindi mo na alam yung ginagawa mo. Hindi man niya lang nagsip, ba't ka sarita itong tanki? Dahil sa, yung laman ng isip niya, makapunta kay Balak, magkaroon ng pera, hindi niya na naisip yung nangyayari. Because thou was mock me, I would have there wear a sword in my hand. For now, I would kill thee. Pasalamat ka kung meron lang akong ispada. Papatayin kita. Sabi niyo sa tanke, grit na grit sa tanke. Hindi mo napapasin, pag kinukontra ka, grit na grit ka. Kahit na sino pa yan, walang pakilam sa'yo. Rebelde ka. Panggulo ka lang sa buhay ko. Hindi pa naman alam ang dahilan. 
Tignan mo, 30. And the ass said unto Balaam, Am I not thine ass? Hindi po ito. <laughs> yung, yung donkey, yung ass, donkey. Kasi minsan yung sa panahon kasi natin ngayon, <laughs> ano eh, iba na yung meaning eh. Hindi ba ako ang iyong donkey? Donkey na lang ka para ano. Upon which thou was ridden ever since. Ang tagal mo na akong sinasakyan. Ang tagal mo na akong pag-aari. Ang tagal mo na akong ginagamit. I was thine unto this day. Hanggang ngayon, sa'yo pa rin ako. Para ba sinasabing, mahal pa rin kita. Loyal pa rin ako sa'yo. Nagmamalasakit pa rin ako sa'yo. Gusto ko lang kabutihan mo. Bakit mo ako ginaganito? Dahil lang sa gusto mo na hindi mo naman maipakita sa Biblia. Oh, see? Applicable na applicable sa ating panahon. Bakit kanya? Oh. Was I ever want to do so unto thee? And he said, Nay. Pero mo pati nanay niya, gusto niya ng pakausap sa donkey. <laughs> Sabi niya, Nay, anong gagawin ko? Nay, kumukontra donkey. Sa Diyos ka lumapit, wag sa nanay mo. Amen? Nay, kanya eh! Ayang capital letter po! Oh. Di ba? Hmm, 31. Then the Lord opened the eyes of Balaam. Yun ang maganda. Pag may conflict na ganyan, manalangin ka sa Diyos, sa Diyos ka lumapit, bubuksan ang mata mo. And he saw the angel of the Lord standing in the way. Kaya pala ayaw ng kumilit. The, the reason why the donkey refused to move is because the angel of the Lord is in the way. And his sword drawn in his hand. And he bowed down his head and fell flat on his face. Why? Because God sent an angel to kill Balaam as he is going to Balak. And because the donkey saw him, he veered out of, she veered out of the way so that the angel will not kill Balaam. And then while they are on a narrow road, the, the, the donkey smashed the, the, the foot of Balaam on one side because he's trying to avoid the angel who is about to kill Balaam. And then he refused to move because the road is so narrow and there is no way that he can pass without the angel striking Balaam dead. The donkey only did everything that he could to preserve the life of his master. Pinagpapalo niya pa. And he struck that donkey not knowing that the donkey has saved his life three times. Oh. Minsan nakala mo kinukontra ka lang. Minsan hindi mo alam inililigtas ka sa maling desisyon sa buhay. Sa maling lugar na hindi maintindihan ng karamihan ng mga anak. Akala nila pinapahirapan sila ng magulang. Hindi nila alam, iniingatan lang sila. Why? Because the parents do not want their children to stray. That's why sometimes we are so mean. That's what you think. But the, the truth is that sometimes the, what you perceive as meanness is our love in action to protect you. Because parents know what will destroy you. Especially if you have godly parents. They will only desire for what is good for you. The same thing with the husband and wife. The same thing with friends. If you really love the person, you will do everything to protect and to preserve. And the angel of the Lord said unto him, Wherefore hast thou smitten thine ass these three times? Eto sana, quit na talaga niya to. Kasi parang pinalo niya, sarili niya. Oh, di ba? Kaya dapat may mga application niyan eh. Oh, these three times, Behold, I went out to withstand thee because thy way is perverse before me. And the ass saw me and turned from me these three times. Unless she had turned from me, surely now also I had slain thee and saved her life. Ang papatayin ko lang naman ikaw, hindi yung ass. Pero preserved ng as yung buhay mo. And then, 34. Eh maganda kay Balaam, kasi nga balimbing, bumalimbing na naman siya. Sabi niya sa angel of the Lord, nagkasala ako. It is only remorse. It is not repentance. 
nakasala ako. For I knew not that thou stoodest in the way. Kita mo? Hindi ko kasi alam eh. Against me now. Now therefore, if it displeased thee, I will get me back again. Sige, uwi na ako. Kung ito ay ano. Pero, eh, the things are now in motion. God wanted to teach him a lesson and us a lesson. So, the angel said, Okay, go and meet Balak. But only say what I will tell thee to Balak. So, as, as I have said, there was only godly sorrow, but not really repentance. Because repentance is necessary in order for us to change our ways. Amen. Amen. So you may uh, have remorse, but if your mind is still set on the wrong things, after that moment of sorrow, you will continue to do the things again. Hindi ba? Madalas tayo mag-forward, naiyak pa tayo, pagkatapos naman nun, back to normal. That is remorse. That is not repentance. That is worldly sorrow. That is not godly sorrow. Because sorrow that does not lead to personal change is worthless. Nalungkot ka nga, hindi ka naman nagbago, walang kabuluhan. So today, we have many Balaams who recklessly travel down the road of disobedience. It was the love of money that led Balaam in the wrong direction. 2 Peter 2.15 Pinan po natin mga kapatid. 2 Peter 2.15 Which have forsaken the right way and gone astray following the way of Balaam, the son of Bozor, who loved the wages of unrighteousness. You see? Dahil sa pag-ibig niya, sa salapi, napunta siya sa wrong direction. Kaya kapag ka ang desire mo ay salapi lang, yung direction mo mali yun. So it should be no surprise to us that many church problems come from leaders who have the mentality of Balaam. 2 Timothy chapter 4, verse number 3. For the time will come when they will not endure sound doctrine, but after their own lust shall they heap to themselves teachers having itching ears. Kasi yun ang gusto eh. So yun ang gagawin. Yung last ang gusto, yun ang gagawin. So ngayon, ano nangyari? We will continue. The table is turned. So the angel allowed Balaam to continue his inadvisable course with one stipulation. Only say the things that God will tell you to speak. So, Balaam finally reaches his destination and Balak took Balaam to a place where the children of Israel could be seen stretched across the plain. He did not waste any time. After he saw Balaam, he said, Balaam, come! I will show you the people that you were cursed. No welcome. No asking, have you eaten yet? Uh, do you need water? No asking. Why? Because Balak, Balak is bent in destroying Israel. And he does not want to waste any time the same thing with the devil. That's why the Bible says, redeeming the time. Because the days are evil. One second count for a person that will go to eternity. So, he did not waste any time. And he went to that place. And then, this is four times that he said, build an altar, offer a bullock, and then after that, I am going to do what you want me to do. But listen, every time that Balaam want to curse Israel, only blessing come out from his mouth. He could not curse Israel. Why? Because God blessed Israel and you cannot curse what God blessed. And then Balak was frustrated. I told you to curse them. Why do you bless them? He said, I already told you, I will only say what God wants me to say. But again, Balak did not stop. He, come, come, there is another view. Maybe a change of scenery will change you. Yon. Amen? That's what I'm talking about. You think a change of scenery will change you? Because it's a different place. So maybe you will... Think differently. And Balak said unto him, Come, I pray thee with me unto another place. So see? Kaya minsan hindi mo alam ang Diablo nagsasabi sa'yo nun eh. Alika lang ka dito. Iba-ibang lugar ito. Yung nagawa mo ron, hindi mo magagawa dito yan. See? 
That's the, the, the tactic of the devil. That's why we need to be careful. We must have discernment from God. If not, we may not realize that the devil is the one leading us to do these things. And then curse them. And then he did not. And then Balak said, let's go to another place. And then again, he did not curse. And Balak said, let's go to another place. And then he did not curse Israel. And then Balak became mad and he struck the hand of Balaam. Ano ka ba? Nakakailang beses ka na. I ask you to curse. Why do you keep on blessing? He said, did I not tell you? I will only say what God wanted me to say. You see, he's still playing righteous while he's already immersed into the camp of the enemies. And so, what will happen? Balak said, I am not going to pay you. Of course, why will he pay him if he did not do his part of the bargain? I'm not going to pay you because you did not do what I want you to do. Listen, our God is a sovereign God. If God does not want anybody to touch us, nobody can touch us. When God told Satan, you can remove his word, but you cannot touch his body, Satan could not touch his body. When he said, you can touch his body, but you cannot take his life, Satan could not take his life. Ladies and gentlemen, we are in the hands of God. We are safe with our rock. So let us do what we need to do because God will take care of us. That is what God is telling us here. Nobody can kill you unless God allowed it. He said in Matthew, Fear them not that can only kill the body, but fear him that can both kill the body and cast the soul into hell. Only God must be feared, especially in this uh, battle that we are in. You see, our adversary meant it for evil, but God meant it for good. Romans 8, 28. All things work together for good. Amen? So, Balaam prostrated. Balak was frustrated. But Balaam, because of his now greed, he was now eaten by greed. So even if he could not curse Israel, he tried to find a way in order to make Israel sin. Because he knew, listen, if Israel will sin, God will curse them. And you know what happened? He made Israel sin. Revelation chapter 2 verse number 14. But I have few things against thee, because thou wast there them that hold the doctrine of Balaam, who taught Balak to cast a stumbling block before the children of Israel, to eat things sacrifice unto idols, and to commit fornication. Sinabi niya, Balak, ito ang Balak ko. Isang beses pa, babalimbing ako, pero ito ang gagawin mo. Oferan mo ng mga babae ang Israel. Pag pumato ng Israel sa mga babaeng Moabites, yari sila. So, inang ginawa ni ano? Ni Balak. Nagpadala siya ng mga Moabite women. At ito mga Moabite women, dinala sila sa adultery, fornication, at idolatry. At nung gawin ito ng mga Israelites, ano nangyari? If you will continue reading, 24, hindi dito ha, 24,000 died in the plague in the wilderness. So what Balaam's cursing could not do were done by the sin of Israel because of idolatry, adultery, and fornication. It is so sad to see the depths to which Balaam sunk. His selfishness became so severe that he lost all concern for anyone but himself. Kapatid, makinig ka sa akin. Pag ang iniisip mo ang sarili mo lang at wala ka ng pakialam sa kalagayan at damdamin ng ibang tao, Si Balaam ka na. 
you are now falling into the errors of Balaam. But the outbreak was halted because Phineas, the high priest, atoned for the people. So although Balaam thought he succeeded, he was badly mistaken. Do you know why? Because his selfishness sealed his doom. He does not even realize that he destroyed himself when he told Balak to do this and something happened to Israel. What happened? Later on, he uh, was able to reap the fruit of what he did. Look at Joshua chapter 13, verse number 22. And we will end. Amen? Magandang balak yan, ano? Amen? Magandang balak yan, ano? Mag-i-end na tayo. Kaya lang, bailambing ako. Baka hindi pa matapot. Pero tingnan natin, ano? Ang sabi sa Joshua 13, 22, Balaam also the son of Beor, the soothsayer, did the children of Israel, Israel slay with the sword among them that were slain by them. Ano nangyari later on? Kasama siya sa mga idolatrous people na napatay ng Israel. You know what happened? Because after this, he lived with them. He became a part of the Moabites. He lived their kind of life. And he was slain together with them. You cannot be greedy and get away with it. You cannot have your own way and get away with it. You cannot go against God and get away with it. Listen, I will summarize and I will end. It is not enough to know God's will. A person must cherish it and do it in his life. Not enough to know. We need to do the will of God. The righteous are people who not only sorrow over sin, but turn from it also. We may commit sin, but we must repent and turn from our sin. They pursue eternal blessing rather than momentary pleasure. Everything on earth is only a momentary pleasure, but what will give us everlasting joy are the things of God. So do things in the light of eternity and do things with eternal value. Righteous people sacrifice their hearts to God and nothing less. Meaning to say, if you're righteous, you will sacrifice things to God knowing that God will repay more than what we have given or sacrificed to our God. Jude's warning against running greedily after the era of Balaam is still needed in our church today. Let us check our motives. Why? Why are we here? What are we doing here? And why are we going wherever we are going. Let us check our motive. Let us check what is in our heart. And then lastly, every man and every woman is after something in life. Amen? All of us are after something in life. The question is, what are you going to pursue? If I may suggest, let us pursue the glory of God. Shall we stand up, please? Every head's bowed.